with hoar frost on the windows. Two bar fire radiating orange light, but no heat. Coats worn indoors and last year's tinsel still hanging. This could be Eastern Europe. Nothing works properly here. And even the kitchen taps give electric shocks. Floor flat I'm sharing with genius drummer Peter Freitas has terminal lung disease and a deeply troubled psychic history. Previous tenants of the house include the pre acid Julian Cope, Ian Courtney Love, Pete Burns of Dead or Alive, and cosmetic surgery fame. Prior to these beautiful freaks, it was home to a coven of black magicians who raised something they couldn't put down. A level and entity that won't let me sleep. Being the largest room in the flat, the lounge also doubles as Pete's bedroom. With his mattress in one corner, his motorbike dripping oil and a turkey roasting dish in another, it's not the most convenient arrangement for me. On the nights when one of his girlfriends sleep over, I hold up in my room shivering under layers of army surplus blankets, reading 19th century accounts of delirious young men in cold rooms. Taking up a yoga position on his mattress, he recites a passage from his favorite book, Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. It's beautiful, like Ginsberg reading Howl, or Christ preaching at the Mount of Olives. Pete's given it Bokkenism and ultimate truth, but I can't concentrate. I'm too fucked up on this tranquilizer lace pot to know what's stored and what's butter anymore. Like every other job-fearing poet in town, I'm using this cheap street anaesthetic, not for kicks, but as a survival tool, a temporary means of escape from Margaret Thatcher's reign of terror, DHSS fraud squad investigators and the sudden menace of Spandau Ballet and the new romantics. Down at carpet level, our teenage drug buddy neighbours, Mike Mooney and Paul Greeny, share a bone with my fellow wild swans. Sporting Tommy Atkins hair goods and baggy tweeds tucked into thick socks and mountaineering boots. My bandmates look like pissed film extras from the heroes of Tallymark. A bong is a homemade affair. All sinuous pipes, rubber bongs, tin foil and sellotape. When Pete suggests exchanging the dirty water in the glass demijohn for a Gauvoisier he lifted from last night's gig rider, we don't understand. But when he explains to us that we'll drink the cognac after it's been fortified with half an ounce of pot smoke passing through it, our faces light up like preschoolers. I told you he was a genius.
spending a shitty dream filled night in the damp spare room at the back of the house. I awake shivering to weak sunshine and the migraine inducing sounds of Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich's drum battle. Before leaving to rehearse, Pete put the birthday present I left from on repeat play on the stereo. Until a moment ago, I'd been attributing last night's fire to the entity that's been targeting me since I moved into the flat five months ago. The pissed off to Scarlet that the magicians who once practiced from the house summoned but failed to banish. But now, undrugged in the clear light of morning, I think it just might have something to do with me leaving my Pifco blanket on for five days solid. I may be five years ahead of my time, but it's no comfort to me. I'm tired of living like a degenerate and I'm going to get my act together starting now. Well, starting tomorrow, because I've just found the note Pete's left pinned to the door. Paul, Jake riding up from Bristol tonight. I'll knock for Mike and Paul on my way home. Ring Jet, Jerry and Hot Knives. Gears in the tin. Love, Pete.